All right, well, as they go ahead and get settled, we're going to move into something that I think we're going to be talking about for quite a long time. We are going to baptize a whole bunch of people. Yeah, as, <laughs> let's celebrate that. <laughs> for those of you who might be new to the faith, baptism is simply a submersion in water as a ritual to proclaim our faith in Jesus Christ. It was an ancient practice that was set in motion by the people of Israel to show an outward expression of an inward change. You know, Jesus himself was baptized in an event that was recorded in the Gospels when the Spirit of God came down from heaven as a dove and rested on Jesus, and a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. And then we see throughout the New Testament that the early church used this practice of baptism to show their affinity with the Christ movement as it was just getting started. And then now here we are at Encounter 2,000 years later, and we're continuing on with this practice today as we baptize almost 20 people. Yeah. So what we're going to witness during this sacred moment is person after person identifying with Jesus Christ, with his death and his burial as they are lowered into the water, and with his life and resurrection as they rise. So during this time, we're going to be singing worship songs together, but when you see your brother or sister come out of that water, we want you guys to clap, shout, make a ruckus, because this is something to celebrate, right church? All right, well, we were able to capture just a couple of the stories of the people who are being baptized today, so go ahead and check out this video. I was about in my early teens and feel like there was a missing void in my life. Uh, the moment for me when I decided to be baptized is when uh, I realized how much is important uh, God and Lord Jesus in my life. Uh, last year I had a very tough year. Baptism means when you give your life to the Lord and that you believe that He's your Lord and Savior. Right now, for me, Jesus is my best friend. I can feel it from the morning that I wake up until the moment is night. And I is with me and is by my side. Baptism to me is accepting to get to move forward and wash away all my sins and be accepted for who I am. The moment I was, I want to be baptized is when I remember that Jesus is my Lord and Savior and that no matter what, He'll always be there for me and that He'll always forgive me. I always feel the presence of God and Lord Jesus lift me up every day. And with that said, I, I found my own my big giants and some addictions that I'm up. They don't have those chains anymore in my life.
Amen. 
family. Hey, would you join me in just giving the Lord one more hand today, church family? It's great to be with you today. How fun to see in that video some of the things that God is doing through the ministries and through your lives around these communities and around the world through our global partners. It is great to be with you today. You know, there's nothing more fun for me than to literally be in the waters of baptism, celebrating new life in Christ, and then to get up here and share from God's living word this morning. So, nothing more exciting. Yeah, we give the Lord a hand for that. And I was thinking about it, I was thinking, you know, I have thought this from the day that God brought me to encounter, and I look around the room today, and you are a good-looking church. Look at you out there. This is a good-looking church. In fact, you're so good-looking. Would you turn to someone near you right now? Go ahead. Look them in the face and just say, you... Go ahead. Turn to someone. You are so funny-looking. <laughs> funny-looking or good-looking, one way or the other. <laughs> Well, we want to thank you for coming to Encounter today. If I have not met you before, my name is John Field, and I'm one of the pastors here, and we are just thrilled to be celebrating the living Jesus Christ together today. And we don't believe that this gathering is a mistake. In fact, we are here to be a part of a great, incredible mission that God has called us to as a church family and as the people of God, and as was shared earlier, and that is to encounter God, encourage each other, and to engage the world for Christ. And basically, over the next hour and a half or so, I want to share... <laughs> why, why are you laughing? I... Oh yeah, those tacos smell way too good, all right? So over the next few minutes, I want to share just a picture, a snapshot of where God is taking us in 2023 together, and if you're a guest, this is a picture that is much, much bigger than ourselves. It's a picture that only God can do as he builds his house at Encounter. And so I'm going to ask everyone to stand today. We're going to read Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 21. And then we're going to pray this morning. This is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 21. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house... Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting Him. You see, what I want to invite you into today is something that God is doing as He builds His house at Encounter. And I want you to know today that as you walk out of here, you have been blessed by God with a license. And it is a holy license given by Jesus Christ alone to walk on mission with Him. Uh, would you pray with me today? 
Father God, we thank you for everyone in the room today. We thank you for everybody who got baptized to celebrate their life in Jesus Christ. We thank you for those watching online. And Lord, we just thank you for the kids who sang. We're just praising you together today as a church family. Lord, we thank you for those who are down the street who aren't here today, who we know you love. We even thank you for those across the world who you are reaching out to with your good news and your grace and your presence in this very moment, Lord. We thank you for your living word, and as we go to it right now, we just ask you to speak in only the way you can, Holy Spirit. We ask this in your name, Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Please be seated. Well, through Jesus Christ, you have been given a holy license to drive on mission. And each one of us has a different part on this mission. We may look a little bit different, all right? Uh, I'm bald. Most of you are not, all right? There's a few bald people out there. By the way, I don't know if you know this or not, but people who bald on the sides are good thinkers, and people who bald on the top are good lovers, and people who bald on the side and the top think they're good lovers, okay? (laughs) But God has gifted each one of us to serve as a part of this great mission by his beautiful grace and glory. And the Lord actually wants all of us to be a part of that. We all have a part, even if this is your first Sunday with us today. You know, my son had this pretty momentous thing happen, I think it was about a year and a half ago now, uh, when he turned 16. He got, his birthday's in October, and when he turned 16, I took him to the DMV to get his behind-the-wheel test. And I actually thought that I had seen it all when I went to the DMV because just a couple years before, I had brought my twins. I mean, talk about, you know, an experience. They literally got their licenses like moments apart from each other on the same day. But when Josh and I showed up for the DMV that day, and I know you're not supposed to have fun there, but there was a lot of fun going on. It was the Friday before Halloween. And when we walked inside, guess who greeted us at the door? But basically a cat. Not an animal cat, but a person dressed as a cat. And this nice woman, she led us inside. She led us to one of the counters. And we, there behind the counter was another woman who was dressed in costume as well. And she was dressed head to toe as a nun. I am not joking you. We weren't sure if she was real or not, but we gave her our paperwork, and she told us what to do. She entered some things in the computer. She said, hey, now you guys go back outside, get in your car, get in the line out there, and someone's going to come out and give you a behind the wheel. And as we were leaving her booth, no joke, she actually blessed us, okay? (laughs) We walked outside, got in our car. There was one car ahead of us, and this person came out to do the behind the wheel test for that, and it was Pocahontas, Disney's Pocahontas, dressed head to toe. So we missed Pocahontas by a car length, all right? So then we pulled up, and I get out of the car, and our person comes out, and I'm just going to tell you, he looked a little angry, all right? He had head to toe outfit on of a pirate. I don't know if he was Jack Sparrow or what. And literally, as I'm getting out the car, he turns to Josh and to me, and he says, Arr! Are you ready for your behind the wheel? And he gets in, they do their thing, and they go off. You see, that day in the DMV, everyone had their part. You see, and God has a part for every one of us to play as he builds his house at Encounter. And you have been given a holy license to walk on mission with him as you follow him. And today what I want to share with you is how God is going to be building his house in this next season. And to do that, you're going to need to remember a few things. And so I'm actually going to need some audience participation today. I'm going to tell you something, and after I say it, you're going to repeat it after me, but let me share it with you first, because this is just the picture of where God's taking us in the remainder of 2023, and this is what it is, and that is is that we are going to tear down the walls, build the house, open the front door, and close the back door. Let me say that again. We're going to tear down the walls... We're going to build the house, we're going to open the front door, and we're going to close the back door. Let me tell you how we're going to do that as we let trust the Lord to lead us. And the first, we're going to tear down the walls with prayer. Henry Blackaby once said this, the most powerful positions leaders assume is when they kneel. 
And it is true, the most powerful position any of us, a church, a leader, a parent, a servant, it doesn't matter who you are, the most powerful position a friend can assume is to kneel in prayer before God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 says this, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We are never more in the will of God than when we are praying before our Lord. Amen? And part of praying is rejoicing. And by the way, that is why when people were getting baptized today, you know, someone was daring me to do a cannonball into the baptismal right here today. I'm really dying to do it right now, but I already got wet once today. So, but you know, as, we were get, as people were getting baptized and celebrating their new life in Christ, and everybody was rejoicing and praying and worshiping in that moment, declaring what was being declared in this pool today. These people who have had an inward change as they've committed their life to Jesus Christ, and now they're wanting to show outwardly that they are new because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for them. That God has done something in their life that they could not do in sending his son to die for our sin, and now inviting us into life with him through faith and through repentance. And that praying for things like life change here in this pool are things that we pray for. And there are certain things in this world that only happen through the power of prayer. There's certain things that only happen through the power of prayer. And it's why when we began this year as a church family, we launched it with 21 days of prayer and fasting as we just cried out to the Lord that there are some things that only you can do. And part of the fruit of what we are seeing in the lives of people around us today, in our families, in our friends, in our neighborhoods, and in our ministries, is a result of a people who are praying and kneeling before the Lord in dependence on Him and expressing our utter dependence on Him. In fact, some of you in this room today, you are in this room today because someone prayed for you. They might be in the room with you today. In fact, they're sitting next to you and they are, or you are their answer to prayer. In fact, even as I say that, some of you know exactly who it is that's been praying for you, that literally prayed you into this room and have been praying you into this moment as you are just willing to be here and willing to listen to what God is doing in the lives of people. You know, it's fascinating. When, when you look at the New Testament, there was a pastor who showed this insight to me years ago. If you look at the Gospels, so that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books of the New Testament, if you put those books of the Bible together and read them, what you find is there are actually 52 specific days in the life of Jesus Christ that are represented in the Gospels. 52 actual days. And in every one of those 52 days that is displayed in the Gospels, Jesus Christ is either on his way to pray, on his way back from praying, or actually praying. And so if we have a praying Savior, we are going to continue to be a praying church. And I want to invite all of you to be a part of that. Would you join me in that? Because you have been given a holy license to drive on mission by Jesus Christ. So we are going to tear down the walls with what? I'm going to try that again. We're going to tear down the walls with what? Prayer. We're also going to build the house with the Word. And one of the core convictions that encounter is to keep the Word of God and the good news of Jesus Christ central to everything we do as a church family. And that means that every Sunday we gather, we are going to get to the Word of God and we're going to share the good news of the grace of Jesus Christ in one form or another Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And one of the things that we love to do as a church family is to tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ and how anyone can know him and that anyone can bring their brokenness and their sin to him and be made new as they follow him as their savior in their life. And that God did something amazing in our place that we couldn't do with dramatic results and now we follow him. And this is what every one of those people being baptized today were celebrating, that when someone gets baptized, the words we say over them in the pool amongst many things is that I baptize you, my brother or my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
buried with him in baptism as you go under the water to symbolize just as Christ was buried for you. And as you bring them out of the water, as you come out, you say, risen to walk a brand new life. And I am convinced one of the reasons that God commanded us to take a step of faith and to be baptized is even though he's done something inward in us through a relationship with him, sometimes we still just need to feel the water coming over our body and washing us as we are made new in him because of what he has done. And here at Encounter, we love God's word and his good news. You know, and I actually want to just read the names of everybody who was baptized today. Uh, this is probably not in order. Uh, and we can, you know, I'll just ask you to save your applause till the end, but I just wanted to name each one today. So these were the folks who displayed their faith in Christ. Uh, Marissa Andrews, Todd Parker, Brooke Carling, Stephen Lopez, Neali Castaños, Jesus Garcia, Penny Blue, and Tara Blue, Carly Mekohos, Carlin Mekohos, Daniel Barr, Alice Squire, Lily Schaefer, Miles Fortinati, Valentina Fortinati, Parker Adams, Mackenzie Warren, Micah Warren, and Ashton Towner. Can we give the Lord a hand today? Hey, God. I just want to note that it's your prayers and your investment in the lives of people that God uses as a part of his process in leading people to Christ. And so we're going to continue to build the house with what? The Word. One more time, we're going to build the house with what? The Word. And we've been given a license to drive on mission by the living God. And so let's put it all together. We're going to tear the walls down with what? We're going to build the house with what? The Word. And we're also going to open the front door with invitation. There is a pastor by the name of Tom Mercer, and he wrote this book with a really interesting title. It's titled The Oikos Principle, and it's the Greek word in the New Testament that means household. And basically what Tom Mercer makes a biblical argument for is that every one of us has a household, and it's 9 to 15 people. They're your family, your friends, your closest co-workers, your neighbors. They're the people you have the most natural relationship with. You don't have to work at all to build relationships with them. And what we see in the New Testament is time after time again, God will use one person to lead a household to the Lord through their life example and through them declaring the living Christ. And so every one of you has been given a holy license to live on mission and actually to be an influence, a light for Jesus Christ and his message of salvation to the household that God's placed around you. And sometimes that means inviting someone to church. It means sharing with them who Jesus Christ is to you and letting them know how much they're loved by God all the way to the cross and out of the grave. And the beautiful thing is no one is better positioned to reach them than you are. God has supernaturally and strategically placed you in their household, your oikos, in order to be an influence for them. And the reality is today, every one of us has a household around us. Every one of us, everyone in this room. And we're actually influencing that household one way or the other. And one of the things that we love to do as a church family is actually to equip you to not only grow in your walk with Christ, but how to reach people around you and to actually live a life of invitation where you're inviting people to follow Jesus Christ. Not only by the way you live, but by the words that you share. And God's literally positioned you and given you a holy license to do that. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You know, we mentioned it earlier. Do you know that Easter is one month away? One month. Do you know there's someone in your life right now? They will not come to church on Easter by themselves, but with an invitation from you, they will come. If they know that you're going to sit with them at church, they will probably show up. And you've been given a holy license to live a life of invitation and to share your life with them, to invite them to church. And maybe they've never been or maybe they haven't been in a really long time. And you've been given the most powerful license of invitation through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so this is going to be a season ahead of us of invitation. And so let's put it all together. 
We're going to tear down the walls with what? We're going to build the house with what? And we're going to open the front door with what? Very good. I'm impressed with you all out there. You're not only good looking, but you have a great memory out there as well. And finally, we're also going to close the back door with friendship. At Encounter, some of the things that we love to help people be a part of is to encounter God in a worship service like we're doing right now. We want you to encourage each other by being a part of a small group and growing in Christ together. And we want you to engage the world by being one of our, one, on one of our many ministry teams as we are all living lives of ministry and lives of mission throughout our entire lives. And every one of those opportunities, worshiping like today, getting into a small group, serving on a ministry team is a starting place to begin to build friendships together centered around Christ and you've been given these incredible gifts and passions by God's design to build up the body of Christ around you every one of you first Peter 4 10 declares as each has received a gift use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace there are people around you today and around your life who need your friendship that you, you have been placed in their life by God to be a friend in their life. And the Bible actually uses this really cool word. It's called koinonia. It means fellowship. It's just a Bible way of saying having Christ-centered friendships. And there is nothing more powerful than having Christ-centered friendships unleashed in this broken world. Can I hear an amen? amen. Do you know that? When you have Christ-centered friendships and they are unleashed in the world around us, God does amazing things. By the way, if you're a guest with us today, one of the great ways to get started in our church family is happening next Sunday. We call it Encounter 11. And we have it after each service, the 9 a.m. service and after the 1045 service. It's 11 minutes of connection right after the service ends. You don't have to sign up for it. You just show up for it. It's, you'll be there for 11 minutes. You'll get to meet some of our pastoral staff. You'll also uh, just get to know how to get started, the pathways to getting started in our church family. And we'd love to have you join us next week. You know, one of the things that's been encouraging for me in this last season has been so many of you actually jump into ministries in our church. And I actually wanted to share some of the names of the newest servants in our church. Just a few of them. There's so many. I'm just going to mention a few today. But here are some. Carly Mechelhose, who just got baptized today, was a, is a junior partner in our Encounter Kids. Can we give Carly a hand? That's, that's amazing. A student using their life to reach children for Christ. Ashton Towner is one of our student leads. Ashton is a high school student who is using his life to reach out to middle school students on Sundays. Praise God for the Ashtons of Encounter. Amber Kraft, she is part of our MOPS ministry, and she leads social media for MOPS. That is a talent in itself. I'm just telling you that right there. We thank God for Amber out there today. Lisa Ann Williams is our newest stage tech. She basically just keeps us all organized and keeps everything flowing behind the scenes. You'd never know she was doing anything, but she's making everything happen on Sundays. We thank you for Lisa Ann over here. <laughs> kind of exciting. Lisa Ann got baptized at our last All Together service, and now she's here helping it all happen as the Lord moves in the room. Praise God for you, Lisa Ann. And then Gigi Howard is our, our newest worship singer on our worship team. We're so thankful for Gigi <laughs> using her voice. And so not only do you get to serve, but as we serve the Lord, as we worship, as we get into small groups, as we get on ministry teams, we also build friendships centered around Christ. And there is nothing more powerful than a Christ-centered group of friendships unleashed in the world in the name of Jesus Christ. People who know they've been given a holy mission to walk with Him. So let's put it all together here this today. We're going to tear down the walls with what? Prayer. We're going to build the house with what? We're going to open the front door with what? Invitation. And we're going to close the back door with what? Friendship. Friendship. The Lord says this in Psalm 127 verse 1, Unless the Lord builds the house, 
Those who build it labor in vain. And God is the one building it, and we get to be a part, and that is where God meets us as a church family. And we have been given a holy license to drive on mission, and God wants to invite every one of you to be a part of that. Now, I'll never forget when Josh pulled back into the DMV parking lot with the pirate. Josh came driving in. The pirate was sitting next to him. He pulled into that stall in front of the sign, you know, that's there. And the pirate got out first. And he looked kind of ornery. He didn't crack a smile. I was worried as a dad in that moment. And he started walking away. And then Josh got out. He's 17 now. And he had this straight-faced look on his face. I was really worried at that point. Because, my, you know, he's really exuberant a lot of times. And so I was like, he's kind of quiet right now. He took three steps towards me, and he couldn't contain it any longer. He's like, yeah! You know, I passed. And he got, now he has a license to drive. And all the freedom that comes with that. And I want you to walk out of here today knowing that you have been given a holy license to live on mission from Jesus Christ our Savior. And you may be here for the very first time today, and I hope you hear the Lord whispering to you that you have a place at the table. In fact, there is a place at the table with your name on it because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. And your faith step today may not be to enter the pools of baptism to declare your faith, but it might be just to come back next Sunday and to continue to learn about Jesus. Your faith step might be to go to Encounter 11 and know how to take that next step in your faith as a part of this church family. Or it might be many things, maybe getting into a small group or serving on a ministry. I don't know what it is, but I do know this, Encounter family. God has great things ahead. Great, great things ahead as we follow him, as we follow Jesus Christ as our Savior. I want to invite Yvette Cortez to come on up here. She's going to pray for us, and then we're going to sing one more song, and then we're going to enjoy some amazing tacos and a whole lot of fun outside. Would you give Yvette a hand as she prays today? Amen, family. Well. What came to my mind was Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Will you join with me in prayer this morning? Lord Jesus, we rejoice today as an Encounter family. As we've been witness to new life with 20 brothers and sisters who have taken the step of faith to dedicate their lives to you today. Lord Jesus, bless our Encounter family. Send your Holy Spirit into every space of Encounter to be a holy place that is consecrated to you. May Encounter be a house of prayer where the fragrance of prayer rises to you always. Open the doors of our hearts and empower us to take your love to our communities and to the world with every person we meet. We thank you, Jesus, for the gift of friendship, for fellowship, for life groups. May we continue to use our gifts to serve each other well. And now, Lord, bless the food that is being prepared and the hands that prepared it. Lord, bless our time together as we gather around the table to have to share in a meal and to have fellowship with one another this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.